So what we're doing here is we're putting um, both Jersey and beef cattle into these and moving them between our rows of bananas. We've been modifying how we do our bananas. So we can load the cattle in um, and we can go ahead and roll these up and down uh, mowing our orchard rows. And so we're just about done. Um, you can see here, you've got the wheels with bearings in place and we used a heavier duty um, conforce or, or reinforcement wire for concrete for our pens. And that looks like it's gonna work really well. We have this one here that is three meters by six meters long. And then we also have um, the wider one, our traditional, um, this one's actually cut down just a little bit from our, our sheep tractor that we'd done, uh, which was six by six. This is actually five meters by six, which should fit down our banana row nicely as well. The other one's for a narrower row planting. Um, still gotta put some latches on, but we'll show you how it looks in the field. So we're back at it. Here it is, the update to our uh, mobile sheep tractor. Um, this one we're actually gonna use for dairy cows. We're putting our Jersey cows in here and check it out. So we've gone ahead and gotten an updated version done here for our uh, centropic field experiment we're doing. And yep, got it all set to latch nicely. We're gonna go ahead and get the jerseys in here and um, really take uh, advantage of a couple of really cool principles. One, the idea of stacking innovations. So putting multiple um, income streams into one space. You Normally this would be something I have to pay fuel and time to mow. I would also be um, feeding cows, so I'd be paying for that or paying to irrigate a different set of space. So we've been able to just modify our irrigation system to be able to reach and, and do this year round. And then um, we're also able to, yeah, get the manure cycle um, and just close that off. And so it just makes a super uh, intensive agriculture space and ups the nutrition in our fields. Check it out. We finally got the modded one done. We had to make it a little narrower. Still doing a couple connections. I got to drill a couple holes for the brackets, but um, we're ready to go in the bananas. So, you know, three years ago, we did um, a bunch of modifications in our fields and tried a lot of the pasture um, cropping stuff. We tried chicken tractors, we tried goat tractors, salatin style tractors, sheep tractors that you've seen a video on probably if you've seen our YouTube channel. And um, we got cows. Now I'll tell you what, we learned a lot, had some good experiences. Um, but one of the challenges here in Zambia at least is the cost of production to be competitive is very difficult. Um, so those systems, a lot of them didn't really pencil out stand alone. Um, but you know what? They definitely stand out and work in an uh, environment like this where I have beautiful bananas that are carrying the brunt of the irrigation and the other costs. And we modified our system so that we could grow the same amount of plants but change our row spacing so that we can run this tractor down it. Now we could be running sheep in this one, which we'll probably will do at some point. Um, right now, we're going to run our Jersey cows and some of our young uh, heifers in these pens going up and down these rows. Now, the beautiful thing is I have 50 hectares of bananas that are getting converted to this layout, and that's 50 hectares of irrigated pasture land. Now, that becomes very, pra very practical and very affordable um, from a competitive standpoint because now I'm cycling nutrients, I'm saving money on the mowing of the fields and maintenance of the fields. I'm getting crop cycling of nutrients. And on top of that, I've got all this irrigated pasture that I didn't have to pay for extra to connect to it. And so looking forward to um, sharing some more videos about this. Tomorrow morning, we'll put the cows in and get them going and then share uh, as we develop the laying hen system to go with it and eventually back with sheep in here as well. So stay tuned. So just think about all the spaces in intensive, especially high value cropping systems that's completely wasted in a traditional uh, agricultural model. You can see all these rows here. I'm normally paying to have those mowed. Same thing here in the citrus. It's been in the process of pruning, but look at that. Plenty of space for that three meter unit to go right down and graze and cycle those nutrients, reduce the input costs on both the cattle side and on 
the high value crop side. And on top of that, use the same land. In our case, we have more than 50 hectares that are completely irrigated pasture land if you in integrate a fixed safe system. And what I like about this hard system for the mob grazing is I don't have nearly the issues with them getting out, getting into crops, ruining high value crops, worrying if the power is grounding properly to the ground, all those issues. It's just simple. We get to make more money with more crops in the same space of land. Check it out. They're finally in. So one of the challenges we always have in um, high density grazing issues is overgrazing. And one of the nice things here is it's easy to gauge. You basically say, hey, when it reaches here, that's when you need to move. And so it's easy for the guys to see and be able to move it when you reach the top of the bottom bar there. So here we go. You can see we've had them going down these rows and yeah, it's working great. So we've moved them today to the higher grass we hadn't cut. Normally it's a little higher than we would like it to be for pushing, at least on this version of our program. But you can see here, they're doing a good job and plenty to eat.